Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson from DailyTexture.com. This morning I'm going to introduce you to a new background. This is Wildlife Masterpieces 3. And this one is available in a whopping 32 color tones because I had so much fun with it and it's so versatile. So let me just show you a little bit about this background. This is the uh, one of the colors that was black and white. This is a black and white version because of the subject I'm going to use. I think this one may work, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, it's a strong painted background with ground level for you to place your subjects. We have a lot of stuff right here, and I painted this stuff in an impressionist manner so it could be this stuff could be a lot of things. It could be splatter. It could be foliage. It could be dust and just grit. Um, it's a high energy texture. Or if you consider this to be foliage and blend with your subject, it could be just a simple scene. So um, I'm going to use it with a horse example, a running horse, because that's what when I made this background, that's what I was thinking of. Something high energy with a horse throwing up dirt and from his feet and splatter and things like that. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. I have a free stock photo since I don't have many horses running pictures. This is a free stock photo I'm allowed to use of a, a, a black horse running. And I'm going to try to work with this one. And as you can tell, it's going to take a little work to turn this guy into a piece of art. But we're going to see what we can do. The, I'm working in Photo FX Lab, like usual. I'm going to use the Masking tab. And um, first thing I'm going to do is mask away his background the best I can. So let's just take care of that right now and get rid of this excess background and bring in the underlying background from the new collection. Now obviously the horse, this is not wildlife and this set is called wildlife masterpieces, but um, you can use this with wildlife, with animals, with even with people, uh, even with things. Like I could even see a race car in this one or uh, a truck mudding or something like that. Uh, this one is very versatile. I lost part of his rear end there, but I'll bring that back. Um, you could do a lot with this one. And that's why I made it available in 32 color tones. I got a little wild with some of the colors and did some really fun ones. Which might be suitable for your subjects that have, um, you know, a more colorful personality, colorful, uh, elements to them like children or things like that that might have colorful clothing on butterflies birds just about anything you can think of you can use this one with and I'm just getting rid of the main part of the the green part and like I said I'm going over his edges but I'll refine that after I see how it's going to look. Now this is on the fly. I don't know if this is going to work at all. I just, I wanted to try it with a horse and see what happens. And I'm going to reduce that brush and get in here. And I'm just being really messy about it. And this is going to be rough here, but see, I'm not, I don't worry about being exact because I'm going to um, blend this over softly. Okay, let me bring back this area where I messed up a little bit. Make sure I have the clearest thing on this particular picture um, is the eye. And that's why I chose it. I don't care if the rest is not clear. I'm going to run the horse layer through Topaz Impression to create a painterly 
effect to it before I'm finished. So I'm not worried about the fact that the rest of it's not in focus. The eye is the most important part and that's what drew me to this particular photo. All right, that's most of the background masked away. Now I'm going to blend right over these feet. I'm going to lower the opacity, make the brush big, and I'm going to just tap like this because I want his feet to be down in there. Feet and legs. Now let's go over this tail. Get rid of some of this extra. I may bring some of it back, but I'm going to have to do some work on that saturation. Now let's go around this right here. Bring the background right into the main. Now notice I have not done any adjustments on the horse layer at all yet. I'm going to though. I'm going to bring back some of this tail area. In fact, I'm going to bring back a little more around the tail. I'm going to show you what can be done here with this uh, tail where the green is showing through. greenish yellowish colors because of the strong sunlight on the tail maybe you may not have to we'll see uh, he does have some pretty strong color I can, I'm going to reduce I want to use him with this texture so I'm really going to work with this I'm going to reduce his saturation to tone down some of that extra color now I'm going to work on this tail area again very gently around the legs just bringing back a little bit of that let's see there's a shadow showing right there I don't want that so we're going to cover that back up right here get that splatter texture right over his tail Okay, he's looking pretty good. Um, now I'm going to work on him. I, I'm going to. I don't think he needs a lot of denoising because he's kind of soft anyway. I'll check the eye. Just a slight denoising. I'm going to click OK on that. I'm going to boost his clarity or details a little bit. just to um, pump him up since he is so soft it'll bring out some of the stuff that's hidden in there let me try clarity see if what that'll do that boosted him a little bit Click OK. I'm using Fur and Feathers under Clarity. Fur and Feathers 1. Fur and Feathers 2 adds a lot more color, which I don't, it doesn't really change the details. It just adds more color. That pumped him up a little bit. Let me try an HDR adjustment on him. This dynamic pop, because that'll really make him stand out. I'm clicking OK down here on the bottom. You can see that on your screen there. Now that's nice. I like that the way it really gave him some highlights. Um, let me move this logo out of the way. So I have the texture background layer on the bottom and him on top and his background's masked away. At this point, I'm going to duplicate the texture layer and put it on top and try to play with some uh, layer modes. This is multiply, which is really really dark but I can adjust that overlay soft light before after the problem with these adjustments here is it really makes this dark 
Yeah, so I bring down the opacity and play with it at a lower opacity, like around 30%, and see what I can come up with. Let's see. Let's multiply, overlay, soft white. Overlay, maybe. I'm I'm looking at his coloring. It's still got the golden tones to it, where the background has the silver. So I can do a couple of things. I can desaturate him even more, like so. Or if I wanted to leave the golden tone, this is where these multiple colors come in handy. I could try to choose another one. I'm looking for something that's pretty dark. That one works pretty good. Because for him, I want this dramatic feeling. That one works good. And you can't even use a combination of these. That one's got the blue tones and the warm tones in it. Uh, let's try this one with the greens. Uh, they all work fairly well. I think what I'm after though for this one is one with less color. I like that one. Okay, I'm, I'm left with number one is the black one. Number eight has this color to it. Let's try just doing number one on the bottom with number eight on top of that. And try maybe 50% on the opacity of number eight, which gives a little bit of the color here, which matches his color. Or I could take his color all the way down. Let me try that. And compare. I've already got it down some. If I take it way down, it, see this is this is where the fun comes in. Which which way do I want to go? Keep the saturation up and go with two different color tones of the texture, or pull that saturation all the way down. In this case, I think I am going to pull the saturation down pretty far and go with the this one, the black one. Take this one back off. But that's something you can do. You can stack them on top of each other and play with opacities and even layer modes to get a result you like for what you're trying to create. This right here is the vision I had for this image when I saw the horse. And so I'm going to go with this one. I'm still playing with the top layer. Um, maybe even go with a multiply at about 51%. And let me mask off some of this, this direction. Like so, to bring that light down onto him, onto his face. I want his face bright. See how my mask is? I'm just bringing, lightening this by masking away that multiply layer. Because the multiply makes it darker. Um, unfortunately, made this real dark. I may drop the opacity to about 30%, which brings out some of these little details here. But I'm going to show you something else. I have included in this collection an overlay down here. Uh, it's a you set it on screen mode. This is um, dust or fog or whatever you want this to be. Clouds. It's it's white on a black canvas. So um, you can set this to screen mode. And when you do, it puts it over top of your subject like so. And you can resize it or flip it around. If you want the you come in from the other way, you can resize, bring it up, and bring it like right over your subject, like that. And you can play with opacity, like that's real dark. 
That's a little bit of it added. I kind of like that. It just gives that extra little oomph. It adds a little bit of fogginess here. If you don't like the actual texture of the canvas, you could, um, there's a, things in every program. I'm, I'm going to go to lens effect and choose diffusion. Um, you can diffuse that and it'll soften it. See, that's with the canvas texture and that's softened. Let's just see what that looks like. Click OK. So that made a slight adjustment and just toned it down and made it a little softer. You could tell it really down here. Um, see, that's before. Let me blow this up so you can see. You see the canvas texture on it. As it's on screen mode, that's without it. That's with it added. It's got a lot of grit there. And um, I went to Topaz Lens Effects and chose High Diffusion. And see how it moved it? It just softened it slightly. I'm not sure if I want it softened or not. Yeah, why not? Let's leave it softened. Let me bring that up a little more so it can look a little more dusty. And now it looks good right here. I like the way it looks over his feet, but I don't like the way it looks right here. So I'm going to mask off some of that right here. Just tap it gently on this dark area like so. And then I'm going to mask a little off right here because it made that highlight kind of bright. Now, before, after, before, after. I may bring it down a little bit, back to 50%. All right. So I have all of these layers here. The overlay, uh, the second copy of the background on top, I set it overlay 30% to with it masked off right here to keep the light. I thought I said that at multiply. I guess I did set it overlay. Let's bring it, let's darken that a little bit. I don't want to take away this. I'm going to take off a little bit more of this, or bring down the opacity a little bit more of this layer and take off some of this one. This is the overlay. You see where it's happening. I don't like it. I don't want it right here on his. I want his face pretty sharp. And I want to darken this, these little splatters right here a little bit. There. Now let's bring the opacity back up. Take off a little more of this. There. That makes him look like he's running through fog or dust or something like that, which is why I included this. I still need to take off a little more off of him. I want him pretty, sh or at least this area of him. Take a little more off right there. Okay, I'm going to go back to his layer now. And I'm going to duplicate it. Now when I duplicate it, I'm going to turn off the bottom one. I just did that because I want to run impressions on um, him, but I don't want to mess with the original one in case I want to leave it alone. We're going to see how impressions works on this. I have a new uh, preset I have set up that I've been messing with the last few days. It's uh, called, it's for water, but it's worked really well for some of the animals. Not sure about it on here. It's a little bit too streaky, but we can bring the brush size down. Still a little bit too swirly. Bring smudge down. And play with that brush size a little bit. 
I got it all the way down now. That's before, that's after. It's giving them a little too much color. I am going to desaturate. Now, that kind of smooths them out a little bit, his graininess. And I like what it does to the mane. I'll probably mask it off the eye and the nose area and reveal the one beneath it. Well, let's accept this and see what that looks like. It didn't make much of an adjustment. Just a little bit. Now if I turn the bottom one back on, that pops his uh, layers out. I'm looking at the eye. Alright, this is the impression. Yeah, I need to bring that eye, nose, and mouth out. And maybe ear. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on the impression layer. I mean on the... Let me think. It's leaving this one on is bringing out lots of details around the edges I don't want. Turning it on and off here to see what it's doing. So on this one, I need to mask away more around those edges if I'm going to leave it on. And I want to leave it on because I want to get the eye. So I'm just going around the edges on that original layer and masking out those. The impression layer is on top. That gets rid of that. Uh, extra stuff. I need to make sure that the noses and eye are clear. Now, that's better. That's the bottom layer, the original layer. Now I'm going to go to the impressions layer. And I'm going to mask away the eye on this layer at about 55%. Just bring back the eye. See how that sharpened right up? And bring back some of this and this and the mouth and a little bit of the ear, which I'd masked away too much of that and down here. So I go back to this one and bring that back, that sharp ear. Like that. Now go back to the impression layer. And I'm going to mask away some of this right here. Just very gently soften that side. Okay. Now on the impression layer, I'm going to run clarity and see if it'll boost what I have done. Once again, I'm doing fur and feathers. Which boosts everything a little bit. And I'm going to try that HDR one again on this layer too. That makes them really pop. Let's try it. I can always undo it. That's a little too much. I like it though. It's just a little too much. So I'm going to run that again. Uh, dynamic pop. But I'm going to go to the transparency of it. And set it in the middle about 50%. That tones it down. We'll see how that works. Mm, still not sure if I like that. Let's undo it. 
and redo it. Yeah, it's okay. I am going to fix a little masking here around his face, though. Bring a small brush down. Like right here. A little bit. The original background showing. So I have the focal point right here looking pretty good. Mask away some of this around the mane just a little bit at the very top. Now, on this layer, this is still real dark, so I'm going to mask away some of that just gently to bring back some more of that detail in those corners and along the bottom edge so it doesn't look like a black strip on the bottom. There. Now let me zoom out and take a look at the whole thing. I like that. It's looking nice. At this point, I'm going to merge everything from stack. If all works well and I don't have any weird funky lines, then I'll have an image I can work with and edit just a little bit more. Worked well. Let me duplicate that, and I'm going to try clarity over the whole thing as it is merged image and see what that does. Makes him a little bit too busy. I'm going to accept it, though. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I do this a lot if I want to pump up just a certain area. I really like what it's done to his face and his mane. I think it's a little too much here. What I'm going to do is invert a, a mask on this layer. I'm going to click the invert button, which is totally going to mask away this entire layer I just did. Okay, now it's gone. Now if I move my brush value over to that side, I can actually bring back some of that layer I just masked away where I added that clarity detail. I really like what it did in the face and the mane. Let me get a little smaller so I can get down here around the nose and mouth. And the ear. And I'll show you here in just a second. If you click this off, it's not that there's nothing there. But when I click it back on, it just boosted that a little bit. I'm going to raise the flow up and mask away or bring back some more of the clarity layer right here. On the face, the ear, the mane, this is where I want my strong spot to be. Before, after. Now that just boosted that clarity right there, but it left everything else blended in nicely soft. I could boost the clarity right here a little bit. So let me try that by bringing back some of this from the clarity layer right there where that splatter is just to give that a little more detail and right there at the back side of the tail. See my little mask here? I have brought it back the clarity adjustment layer. I've brought back on his face and head and down here around his feet where the splatter is to give that um, detail in those two areas because it, that clarity adjustment gave his body a little bit too much detail and you want the shine to show but you don't want it to pop out in your face what you want popping out is that sparkle in that eye and that really that beautiful flowing mane and then this splatter right here at least that's what I want popping out we'll look at uh, this right here, this little spot is bothering me. It's a little bit too light. I'm going to merge the whole thing. And if it ever gets done, it'd be nice. Now I'm going to duplicate it so I don't mess up what I've just done. Um, I'm going to, there's a, 
brush here, a burn and dodge brush. I'm going to play with that a little bit on this spot right here just to see if I can darken this a little. Let's see how that looks on this underside. I'm not sure if it's going to work right or not. There's only one way to know. Turn it off and back on. And also take it all the way out. Off. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't work or I'm not doing it in the right spot. So let me delete that. Duplicate it again. Um, this is why I like to zoom out. Because you can sometimes see some things when zooming out that you wouldn't see otherwise. I think the only area that really needs it is right there. Not all the way up here like I did. Now, there. I think that looks a little better. Because he does have a shadow right there. And then these the white areas are the sunlight hitting them. Alright, now I'm going to merge all that together. It's taking its time there all right now if I wanted I like this and zoom out you see see it's got high energy it's got the black and white look highlights are a little hot right there um, I'm gonna pull down on the highlights this is all the way down this is up um, Let's see. Rather than mess with the highlights, because I really like the highlights over here, I think I'm just going to use a, a burn brush on that area. Maybe not quite as strong. Make a big brush and just kind of tap right there very gently just to tone that particular highlight right there down. That's better. Now let me zoom out again. Before. See how it just toned it down? I toned it down a little too much. But there, um, since this is a duplicate layer, I can just bring down the opacity on what I just did and get it about where I want it, where it's not so bright. It's just toned a little, which is about 50%. So once again, merge everything. This is why I zoom in and out a lot on these images to really get the full view as if you're looking at it from across the room because you can see certain things that may stand out to you when zoomed out that you wouldn't see when you're examining all the little details up close. Now he looks pretty good. I could play with sharpness and sharpen him up a little. It sharpens the whole thing. You don't want to go too sharp. But you can always ma sharpen it and then mask away. I like a little sharpness on that eye. I'm, I'm going to adjust the sharpness up on this duplicate layer. Then I'm going to once again invert mask. And only bring it back at the eye right in there and blow it up so I can see it and bring him down bring a real small brush and just bring that back around the eye and a little bit out from the eye and around the nose a little bit right there at his lips it's just a little extra detail that makes it pop and it's not much it's very subtle you could actually even raise it up even more now that I've masked it it just brings that sparkle out a little more 
I'm not sure if I like the pattern in his fur from that impression adjustment. So I may go even further with this. You notice I have a lot of layers here now. But I'm after a certain look. I have the lighting like I want. I have the mane and the eye and the nose like I want. I have the feet like I want. I have the background like I want. There's just a little slight pattern in his fur I'm not real happy with. And I don't know if I can fix that or not. I'm doing a duplicate layer. I'm going to take the whole thing and do impression. And I'm specifically going to be looking for a uh, painterly effect that I can use on the uh, his body fur. And that's not it. I don't want anything too choppy. And I may not even have anything here that I could use. Because there's a dreamy one that kind of softens it. And another dreamy one. Most of these are looking rather uh, choppy. Lose detail. Tones down the detail of the whole thing a little bit. You can zoom up here. Oil glaze, oil glaze light, smooth out. I like that loose detail adjustment. Just kind of tones down this wiggliness, maybe about 50%, and then mask it off the areas where I don't want it loose detail. Let's try it. What, what, why not? This is why you have duplicate layers. That toned down the detail of everything. I'm going to invert once again, take away that whole layer, and I'm going to bring it back just on his body. Or at least partially bring it back and just see. Just by tapping here. He still has the highlights, but just tones down some of in these white areas some of that squiggliness. Makes him look a little smoother. You can see right here where it's coming out. I don't know if it's going to be enough to make a difference. Yeah, I toned it down a little bit. Let's go a little higher with the flow. Now, I've taken away too much up here. I want to keep some of that right there. Let's blow it up. That's before that adjustment. That's after. It just tones it down just a little bit. Um. You can always adjust the opacity of it to kind of get it. Maybe I always like to do things if I'm unsure. Do them in the middle about 50%. That just tones it. It's just a little subtle something. And this is what I'll do at the end. I'll fiddle and fiddle. And look at each part of the body. The eyes, the mane, the nose, the mouth, the body itself, the feet, uh, the area around it. I'll move out from this focal point of the subject and look at each area and see if anything needs to be done. Um, after that little adjustment, I'm fairly happy with this. I'm going to merge everything. Just waiting on it to process.
I know you guys will have fun with this one. Because you've really liked the grass ones. And this is beyond grass. I mean, and you could even go to the grass layer if you wanted to add grass into this and mix them up. Um, that's the whole point of these is they can be used alone uh, in combination with each other and even different color tones. If I wanted to give him a little purplish hue here, I could see I could take a whole other layer of one of the other colors and put it on and create a whole different image like that that purple one on top of him set to overlay that's the black and white that's the purple you can create a whole different image play with opacities mix them up blend them together come up with something totally different but right now for this one I do like the black and white one that's the one I had in mind I could adjust um, my dynamics if I wanted to pump things up a little bit more and I could adjust exposure down up go down a little bring dynamics in a little so there's just a little slight adjustment that makes him pop just a little bit more I like it I'm going to keep it once again merge everything I didn't intend on doing that adjustment but it looked good so but that's why I do the merge layers and duplicate them so I can play with that duplicate of the merge layer and maybe come up with a different result but without messing up what I'd already done and it, because I have a gazillion layers it's taking forever but that's uh, just some examples from this little set wildlife masterpieces 3 in, in 32 color tones and I hope you guys will enjoy working with it as much as I do thanks for watching and have a great day